Hello, this is Akira. Uh, this video is about intro to jazz for bluegrass players. I am holding the metal end, but I'm going to make it to universal so that I'm not going to say G string, fifth fret. I'm going to say C, B, G. So that banjo, guitar, double players can follow me. Okay? Uh, I've been the first one to admit that I am not a jazz player. I struggled all through the years, starting with uh, Fred Gagger's banjo album that I helped him in uh, back in the 70s, and Grasmatez band in the 80s. We did a lot of swing and jazz tunes. Al Petaway showed me a lot of good stuff. In the last 10 years or so, I've been uh, um, playing with Roger St. Vincent, Paul Williams, and Andy Mollard, Note 18, along with Demetrius Kakavas, and they are great jazz players. But anyway, I'm not a jazz player, but I enjoy it, and it's a challenge that I enjoyed. Um, when I look back now, I'm trying to, I'm going to sum it up what my uh, problems were, what my issues were. Number one was chords are changing much quicker than bluegrass. In bluegrass you might have two bars of G, two bars of C, two bars of D, and two bars of G. But in jazz you might have two chords in one bar. Number two, and these chords are not that easy. Number three, Play melody is important for jazz and bluegrass, but if it's a bluegrass tune, it's okay to play the lead melody at the kick kickoff and third break and nobody will yell at you. But if it's, it's a jazz tune, they tend to go from the first time around you play the melody and then you take off, show off what you can do, and then come back down to melody at the end. So, these are the three issues I finally figured out. And I'm going to show my approach now. I wish I had known this 20, 30 years ago, but I came up with an approach or solution recently. They are not the only solutions, but it's a beginning. So, Let's start. I'm going to show you three chords. G6, G diminish, and A minor seventh, right here. Okay, let's start with G6. Oh yeah, before we go into G6, let's talk about G7. You have played G7 when you're playing bluegrass. G7 has an F note, and F note is leading you to E note in C chord. G7 is like, uh, let's go somewhere, it's not steady. And when it gets to C chord, you're like, yeah, that's where it should go. On the other hand, G6 is steady. G6 has a G triad, of course, G root and then third B and then fifth D G B and D as triad but you have to add the sixth E so it's G B D E G B D E G B D E if you want to go octave higher G B D E G B D E right you can add G, another G on top. If I go two octaves, G, B, D, E, G, B, D, E, G. And I want to practice these four notes all over. Go up and down, skip a note, skip a beat, add a slide to it, like a like that. 
upside down, hammering on, pull offs, skip a note, skip a beat or two. Anyway, you can keep playing these four notes. G6 should not be that hard. Oh, by the way, these three chords have four notes each. So G, B, D, E. Four notes, right? G, B, D, E. All right, let's go to G diminish. Yes, there is a chord that you have been avoiding a long time, but if you want to learn jazz tunes, you need to know diminished chords. Once you learn it, it's not that difficult. You just have to get used to it. G diminished has G root and then minor third B flat. Minor third up to D flat. Minor third up to E. And then minor third up to G. The spacing is the same. Minor third, three frets. So it's G, B flat, D flat, E and G. If you play the chord, you hear what. Scary movie soundtrack has. Yeah. Another way to look at it is G on mandolin or fiddle, G on uh, dobro, banjo, and guitar on third string. If you go up to 12th 12 fret, it's G again. 12 frets divided by 4, 3 frets apart. G, B flat, D flat, E, and G. G, B flat, D flat, E, G. B flat, D flat, E, and G. So you, I would just play. These four notes. Up and down. Skip a note. Oh, uh, by the way, you can add other notes in these four notes. But for now, let's stick with these four notes because it will be it will make sense. All right. Eventually, you want to add A or something, but uh, for now, G diminished. You just we just play G, B flat, D flat, E. Okay. And then somebody will say, "Oh, wait a minute. G and E are in G six. And now you, I'm saying G and E are in diminished chord again? Yes! When you look back to G triad and C triad, G is common, right? In G chord and C chord. You have to change B note to C and then D note to E to go to C. But G note is in common of both notes, both chords. Same thing with G chord and D chord. D note is in both chords. It's okay, right? In this case, there are two notes that are the same in G6 and G diminish. All right? Let's go to the third chord, A minor seventh. A minor triad, you should know, it's A, Minor third up is C, and then fifth is E. A, C, E. A, C, E, E. And to add the seventh, you have to add G note. So it's A, C, E, G. A, C, E, G, right? And I want you to keep playing these four notes. difficult and somebody will say wait 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 G and E are in there again yes pretty cool huh 
So if you have these three chords, G6, G diminished, and A minor 7th, you can keep playing G and E. And you are safe. Yes. E and G, E and G. G and E, G and E. G and E. You are safe, but it will be boring. So let's look at the other two. Two notes that are not in common. In case of G6, we had B and D, right? B and D. For diminished chord, we had B flat and D flat. Hey, both notes just went half one foot down. Two. Let's look at A minor seven. It goes to A and C. Another one foot down for both notes. So for G6, B and D, G diminished, B flat and D flat. For A minor seventh, it's A and C. Pretty cool, huh? So you can play that over these chord progressions. Or if you can if you want you can match, mix and match G and B, G and B flat, G and A. Or you can come down like a say G E D for G6, G E D flat for G diminish, G E C for A minor seventh. Mix and match. You just have to pick what you like. Okay. So, what you can do is, say you, you're still having a hard time with G6. Then go ahead and play, say chord progression is half bar each. Then you should go ahead and play G6 for four bars. Like that, and then play G diminished for four bars. Go up and down, skip a note, skip a beat, and do the same thing for A minor for four bars. Oops. four bars play four bars each and then following week you can do two bars and then one bar and then by then you know where to go you can play a half bar each all right so to sum it up chords chord changes are fast in jazz dance but once you play for four bars or eight bars or 16 bars, you see where the notes are. And then you look at what's changing into the next chord, you might see a relationship. Okay, chords are different, difficult. That's number two issue I had. But if you analyze the relationship between these two chords or next two chords, you might see, oh yeah, just B and D are changing to D flat, B flat and D flat. E and G stay the same. Yeah, right. Number three, coming up here, on phrase. Doing two bars of G6, you can come up with your own style for own phrase by going up and down or skip a note, skip a beat, put a syncopation in it, add pull off. So that's it for now, but um, I want to show you, I want to give you a couple of homeworks before I go. Yes, homeworks. One, first one, 
is G diminish. Like I said, you need to keep playing G diminish until your fingers know where to go without thinking. After you are done with G diminish, I want you to go to B, uh, go to A diminish. Did I do right? Right? After you get used to that, go to B diminish. And then you're gonna say, oh, I'm just gonna say C diminish and D diminish. No, that's it, just G, A and B and you're done. And you tell me why you're done. Homework number two is, okay, you have G6 and G diminished and A minor seventh. Stay with G6 and A minor seventh, but change the G diminished to G sharp diminished and come up with your own style, own phrase, because you need to look at what are changing, what are not changing, what had changed and what did not change. Then you would be surprised to see what changed or what did not change. Okay? So good luck to you. Have fun with it. Be safe. Be healthy. And thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.